If you're Ferrari or Porsche, it's fairly easy to make your car stand out from the crowd. But what about if you're Ford? How do you make your small MPV, such as this B-Max, stand out from all the other small MPVs out there? Easy. You give it sliding rear doors. So that's what makes the B-Max stand out from the crowd, but is it a class leader? To find out, we'll assess it in the areas of space, drivability and affordability before settling on an overall score out of 10. These sliding doors give great access, particularly in tight parking spaces, and the B-Max is also novel because it does away with this central B-pillar. But don't worry about safety, it's actually integrated in the doors themselves and these heavy duty locking mechanisms top and bottom, so it still scores top marks in crash tests. Here in the back, these outer two seats are actually pretty comfortable with a decent amount of headroom and legroom, but this middle one is quite narrow. Also worth noting that these doors are pretty heavy to close from the inside, a bit awkward. In the back, you can fit a rear-facing child seat, and while the boot is bigger than the Fiestas, it's still not quite a match for a Citroen C3 Picassos. You can, however, still drop the rear seats to form a flat loading bay, and the B-Max will take a baby buggy without the need to remove a wheel. Here in the front, you get a slightly elevated driving position, which means the B-Max is very comfortable and also you get a great view of the road. However, like a lot of modern Fords, this dash cluster here is a bit cluttered with loads and loads of buttons and it's not immediately obvious what they all do. Also, this screen is on the small side. Talking of screens, however, we really like Ford's heated windscreen, which clears ice in about a minute. For space, the B-Max scores 7 out of 10. There are some really good things about the way the B-Max drives, starting with how narrow it feels, which makes it perfect for nipping through congested city streets. We also really like the 1.0-litre EcoBoost petrol engine, which is very responsive and would certainly be our pick if you're going to do a lot of town driving. For those planning on doing longer journeys, Ford also offers the B-Max with a choice of diesel engines, including this 1.6 litre that we're driving today. While frugal on a long run, we've been getting about 50 miles per gallon, it is a bit noisy in town and boy is it slow. 0 to 60 takes 14 seconds. the most surprising thing about the B-Max though is that it's actually quite good fun to drive and that's because Ford has worked hard on making sure the controls are really nicely weighted. The steering is very responsive, the gear shift is slick and for such a tall car it doesn't actually lean that much in corners. We would say however that this heavier diesel model does compromise the handling slightly over the lighter and livelier petrol version. The trade-off in petrol and diesel models is a slightly firm ride, but it's not enough to spoil the B-Max's driving credentials. It scores 8 out of 10. Next, we move on to affordability, and we'll start with the price. At about £13,000 for the entry-level model, the B-Max is more expensive than its main rivals, including the Citroen C3 Picasso, Hyundai iX20 and Kia Venga or at least it is unless you're prepared to haggle because Ford dealers are well known for offering discounts. Fords are generally pretty cheap to maintain and insure as well, although owners have struggled to match the claimed 55 miles per gallon of the EcoBoost petrol models. There's also no B-Max that emits less than 100 grams a kilometre of CO2, although this diesel model gets close with 104. A slightly stingy level of standard specification also means you should upgrade to ZTEC to ensure you don't lose too much money when it comes time to sell. Going back to our original point, does the B-Max do enough to stand out from the crowd? Well, yes and no. On the plus side, it's more fun to drive than you would probably expect of a car of this type. 
Plus, although they have their drawbacks, the sliding rear doors do certainly improve access. However, the B-Max loses marks for being a bit on the pricey side, as well as not quite as versatile as some of its rivals in a class where practicality is key. Overall, it scores 7 out of 10. To see how some of those rivals performed, you can read reviews by clicking up here to go to the Telegraph Cars website, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking down here.